Hey guys, so today we are going to be pulling out bismuth metal from Pepto-Bismol. Um, this was a procedure that was done on another YouTube channel called Nile Red. You can go, I'll put a link in the description so you can go check that out. But we're going to be doing a few things differently here. In this early mile flask we have about 200 milliliters of water. I'll be adding about another 250 or so uh, milliliters of hydrochloric acid. And that is to dissolve the bismuth from the Pepto-Bismol. I've got a few empty-ish uh, jugs here of Pepto and a couple new ones. Uh, so we should have plenty to get plenty of bismuth metal. Uh, so I've got the hydrochloric acid added to the sterile amount of flask and I've got a funnel sitting up top here. Um, I went ahead and emptied out the partials uh, into this beaker of Pepto-Bismol. One of the big differences between this reaction and what Nile Red had done was he was using the pills. Uh, the tablets instead of the liquid form and another thing that is different is he used significantly more water in his reaction than I am and the reason why I'm not using as much water is because this stuff is already liquid it's already dissolved into purified water as well as I was using the spray bottle to spray out the bottoms and so there's a decent amount of water already in here and how that's going to affect the yield that's hard to say but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and drop in a stir bar get that stirring and then start adding the Pepto-Bismol. Okay, so I've been letting this stir for about an hour now. And uh, now it's time to filter it off, leaving the bismuth chloride behind. The precipitation that you see right now, the white precipitate, is primarily salicylic acid. Um, that's produced whenever the hydrochloric acid reacts with the bismuth subsalicylate. Um, but that will be filtered off here, leaving hopefully primarily uh, bismuth chloride in the beaker below. I'm gonna go ahead and start filtering this off and then uh, we'll pick back up whenever it's done. This is taking so long to filter. I had let this sit overnight with both of these. This is the one with the cotton on the bottom, and this is the one without. And the one without has actually still got stuff in it overnight, like it's not draining at all. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and pull the filter, put a new one in, and keep going, and hopefully we can get this stuff filtered out. So it's the next day, uh, and this is just now starting to finish filtering. Um, and then on top of that, it is quite cloudy still. I mean, there's a noticeable difference, uh, quite a noticeable difference. And I've changed the filter out several times, and there's been mud, uh, this uh, salicylic acid, at the bottom every time. So it, it is catching some. Um, I'm thinking I'm going to try to filter it one more time. And if that doesn't clear it up significantly, then I'm probably going to, to heat it up and get, get it all steamy. 
and uh, evaporate some of that water off and see if that makes any sort of difference on whether or not I can get this filtered out. So I filtered this out again and it gave me pretty much the same result. It was really, really cloudy and uh, no amount of filtering that I was gonna do was gonna make any sort of difference. So what I ended up doing was heating this up to about 80 C and then letting it cool down. The reason why that worked is because most of this cloudiness is due to salicylic acid. Salicylic acid has a pretty low solubility in water. Um, when it's room temperature water, I would say it has about two grams or so um, of solubility. It'll, you know, you can dissolve about two grams of salicylic acid in the water. However, when you heat it up to about 75, 80 degrees Celsius, that solubility shoots way up and you get about 20 grams per liter. So what I did was I boiled off about 500 milliliters. I didn't boil it, I steamed it off. And you can see right up here the line where it started. And uh, then I let it cool. And what that did was dissolve a lot of the salicylic acid. And as it cooled, the salicylic acid crystallized out and took a bunch of the particulate with it. Um, and you can see the, cl the cloudiness down here where there's the crystals and then up here where it's all clear. So now I need to decant and filter this off and uh, then we can proceed. So now that everything is filtered, you can see it's a nice clear solution now, we can go ahead and drop out the bismuth using aluminum. Before we start, I'm gonna show you what it looks like during a test to see if there's still aluminum in the solution or bismuth in the solution. Um, if you put just a drop or two on the aluminum, you will see that a black cloud will start to form And how fast that black um, powder shows up, that's the bismuth, is very dependent on how acidic your solution still is. But you can see that I've got this powder forming. Uh, so there is still bismuth in the solution. So we should just be able to start dropping in aluminum and it will start reacting and essentially switching places with the bismuth in the solution and dropping it out as metal. I'm going to go ahead and start reacting. I've got a bunch of folded up aluminum here. I'm going to go ahead and start reacting it and uh, we'll see how much bismuth we get out of it at the end. I'd let this sit overnight uh, with some aluminum in it to drop out all of the bismuth that I can and make sure all the hydrochloric acid was reacted. Uh, so there's a black sludge at the bottom of this glass now. Uh, what we need to do is go ahead and filter it off. And uh, that is the bismuth that we will throw in a crucible and melt down. I'm going to go ahead and filter this off. I have a feeling it's going to take a while, so I'm not going to videotape the whole thing. And I will come back once this filter is full. Another thing I wanted to mention uh, while this is filtering is that whenever I started dropping in the aluminum foil, it started to steam up quite a bit. I kind of expected that because there was an excessive acid in there when I was dropping in the aluminum. However, it also started to off-put a really horrible vapor of some sort, which I did not expect. I don't know if it's due to the fact that I was using liquid versus the pills, and that's maybe why uh, it fumed off, but it's hard to say. The best way I could describe what the vapor smelled like, um, and if you're a smoker or had been a smoker, I'm sure you know exactly what this smells like. It smelled exactly like if you light a cigarette backwards. Um, that, that really nasty smell is exactly what it smelled like fuming from here. Uh, so I had to carry it outside real quick and uh, finish the reaction out there. Uh, just keep that in mind if you do decide to do this, that you might want to do, uh, drop in the aluminum foil outside. So this is the bismuth powder after it's been uh, filtered and rinsed. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and burn the filter uh, when I go to melt this down. So I'm just gonna wrap this up into a ball, throw it into a crucible and, and fire it down. Uh, I'll go ahead and pick up the camera when we're ready to do that. Okay, so I've got it loaded into a fresh crucible here. 
and uh, we're gonna go ahead and torch it down and throw it into this steel mold and see how it works or see how it looks so I finished melting it down and what I ended up with was significantly less than what I expected um, I ended up with about a half gram of bismuth metal uh, and I should have gotten I don't know maybe along the lines of five grams four grams or so um, and I think the reason behind it is that uh, I was using map gas to torch this down and map gas gets hotter than the melting the, um, the boiling point of bismuth and so I think what I did was I evaporated the majority of my bismuth off because I started with quite a larger globule inside the bottom of the crucible and as I would move it around to soak up the tiny little beads of bismuth that were forming uh, it wasn't getting any bigger and as I kept doing that, it kept getting smaller, and that's when I decided to dump it. And it left me with about a half gram. So this isn't really enough for me to purify. Um, or, so what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and work on getting the rest of this bismuth out of this Pepto-Bismol, out of the other uh, two jars of it that I have. And we're going to see if we can't get any more. Um, after that, I'm going to go ahead and attempt to do electrolysis, which I'm going to end up doing in the next video because this is taking quite a bit longer than I expected. But I will go ahead and get the bismuth together. And uh, I'm going to do a couple things differently on this next run. Um, I'm going to be using my kiln instead of the torch, and hopefully that will uh, give me a bit better results.